Today we're going to be looking at some TikTok dating advice and surfing Reddit's Am I the A-hole? Let's hang out and let's get into it. What's up, guys, and happy Monday. Welcome to Unapologetic Live. I'm here in Taylor's in person. Oh, I hit the button and it was muted. See, I'm rusty. Oh, well. Beep, beep, beep. There's, your, there's your air horn. I am we here. We got it anyways. He's here. We've got our whole little like staff thing going on tomorrow here at PragerU. So Taylor came in from Nashville. Scott's here and back, but he's not in the producer's bay. So Whole gang's back together, guys. Whole gang's back together again, except we're not back together on the podcast for you guys. Yeah. But that's okay. Today, we're going to have just a fun time. We're going to get your reactions and give our reactions to some TikTok dating advice, as well as surfing Reddit's Am I the A-Hole? Because I love to uh, insert myself into other people's drama and advice uh, and give my opinion. <laughs> we were just talking before the show. I'm like, we were looking at all these videos that people are making, giving their dating hot takes and stuff. And I'm like, I'm so tired of all these podcasts with all these people just you know talking whatever they want to talk about people's relationships like no one cares about your opinion as we're like preparing to do a podcast <laughs> reacting to dating right. advice so whatever and we're, we're live yeah, yeah <laughs> so yeah, here we are know. let's do it like, don't throw stones in a glass house as they I guess, say guess not. <laughs> let's get into video number one uh and we'll just see this one doesn't have Oh, there's no caption on this one, so we'll, we'll see what this girl has to say. Mystery box. Mystery box. If your partner's words are, I don't want to be in a relationship anymore, I don't love you anymore, or I lost feelings, or anything along those lines, I will put my life on the line. I will put down a hundred thousand million thousand trillion dollars down my own life on the line, my entire family's life on the line, <laughs> that woman is seeing somebody else, okay? Mm. If one day they love you and then the next they don't, I guarantee you somebody else has entered the picture, okay? 1,000%. 1, 1, 1,000 trillion million. Does it really matter? I'm just thinking about this. Like, if somebody's looking you dead in your face and they're like, I don't love you anymore. I don't want to be a relationship anymore. You know, relationship anymore. You know, back in the day when I was a wee lad, right? My my response might have been like, is there somebody else? What's going on? Nowadays, if somebody looked me dead in my face and said, I don't want to be with you. I don't love you anymore. I would just be like, all right. So <laughs> I'm just going to... There's the door. I'm just bye, gonna, Felicia. Yep. Um, bye. That hundred million billion trillion number that you just listed is how many Fs I don't give. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Somebody commented on my Instagram uh, Q and A today and was like, "How do you get over somebody who is, you know, treating you like a placeholder, like a doormat, or whatever?" And back in the day, old, more insecure me would have been like, oh, "What's wrong?" Now I'm like, stand up, stand up and walk away. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You do not need that uh, sort of attention in your life. You do not need that person in your life. And if they're treating you like a placeholder, then that's exactly what you are to them. So why are you trying to act like you're anything else? I feel like the auntie comes out in me when I... <laughs> 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 when we get into the dating advice subject matter. Yes, please stand up. Yeah, I think, I mean, do you think that if that's the number one problem that young women have in relationships is like not uh, like allowing themselves to be treated less than what they deserve or or because, oh, uh, you, you get too emotionally invested in the guy. You mm -hmm. want it to work out. You want it to all be mm -hmm. be true. And then you give him too much leeway, too much rope, too much of yourself. And he just keeps you in his back pocket. And, and I mean, I think guys kind of do that, can do that, too. But, yeah, I think it's pretty uh, it's pretty shared. I mean, if it's a problem for either gender more than the other, it's for women. 100%. Sure. Yeah. And I think a lot of that comes from not having healthy models of what good relationships are supposed to look like and what a man is supposed to do for you in a relationship. So then you just fall into this pattern of being in relationships with people who are giving you way less than what you deserve or just thinking that is what you deserve. For all of you Perks of the Wallflowers fans, Perks being a Wallflower fans out there, we accept the love we think we deserve, you know? That, that quote. I don't know that movie, but that's deep. <laughs> it's a very emo, very, it's true. emo young adult movie <laughs> adaptation. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we, ex we accept the love that we think we deserve in a lot of ways. And then we go, oh no, it's going to change. Or if it doesn't change, 
this is the best that I'm going to get and nobody else is going to want me. So I might as well stay in this bad situation, which I think a lot of people do that to themselves. The, yeah. I mean, if, just generally speaking, if you're in a situation ship and there's all these like, you know, questions about you want more commitment, but the other person's not quite there and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's just, that's, it's not a good sign. And I, I would say, and from my experience, and this is, I mean, shoot, my wife did it to me. Mm -hmm. um, the best way to, like ensure that you end up in a healthy relationship men or women but i guess especially young women is to to refuse to compromise on your value and don't tolerate someone treating you like they can keep you in their back pocket even if you are in love with them even if you care even if you want the relationship to work more than anything else in the whole world if you compromise your integrity as a person then and and become subservient to them or become willing to adapt yourself to please them or to make the relationship work or anything like that then you're you're that person will, will A, not respect you and you won't be able to have a relationship as yourself because you'll always be stuck in like trying to perform to be who they want you to be. And it's just, uh, it's not a good thing. And I feel like we see that over and over again, but that's the hardest thing not to do sometimes when, when your whole heart and all your emotions are going wild and you want the thing to work more than anything, but you have to, you have to be true to thine own, to thine own self. Yep. And all this, we didn't even answer <laughs> anything that what she said in this TikTok, but doesn't matter if they're cheating on you at that point. No. At that point, <laughs> you better hit the road. Okay. <laughs> this one is lessons from the dumpster fire decade of my life. Get ready with me. Another 20 things I wish I knew while dating in my 20s. Let's talk about 20 things I wish I knew while dating in my 20s. Just because he loves you doesn't mean he's not also looking for another woman to love more. You can't. Damn. Okay. Just because he loves you doesn't mean he's not also looking for another woman to love more. <laughs> it's like, who hurt this lady? <laughs> What's that one quote where it's like, don't don't let your girlfriend stop you from finding your wife? <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. Uh, yeah, but yes, who hurt her? Somebody, somebody did hurt her. Clearly. It's not to say that what she's saying is not true in some cases, but also, who hurt you? Okay. Also, she's speaking very fast. Let's Let's keep going. You can't nice yourself into a relationship. Flattering him with your words and actions won't make him stay when he's already thinking about leaving. Being convenient yeah. is overrated. Don't be a convenient part of his life. Be irreplaceable. He's not going... Don't be a convenient part of his life. Be irreplaceable. I mean, you kind of... Wouldn't you want to be both? Wouldn't the convenience be irreplaceable? <laughs> to some extent? Wouldn't you... Do you like... Do you want a girl to be inconvenient <laughs> when you're in a relationship with her? Right. I don't know if she just means, like, don't be too accessible to him. Like, you don't want to be there for everything so that he knows he can rely on you. But, like, he want, don't you want him to know he can rely on you in a way? I'm not saying, like, be clingy and always be there. Yeah, I mean, I think we're reading too much into this. It feels like one of those just, you know, fortune just cookie quips that people talk about in relationships. Like, sure. you know, don't don't be convenient. Be, ir be irreplaceable. What is it? Don't be convenient. Be irreplaceable? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can be yeah. both. Whatever. You can slice that in multiple ways. Yeah to marry you just because his mom wants him to marry you the red flag you ignore on the first few dates becomes the red ocean that will drown your relationship in its last days some men true. only want to see you succeed enough so that you look good standing next to them but not enough so that your success overshadows theirs a man with an old soul doesn't necessarily have a mature soul just because he listens to classical music and watches old films doesn't mean he's any more ready to commit it just means he likes old things mm -hmm. you don't owe him an explanation as to why you don't want to see him again not wanting to see him is reason enough some men only reveal who they truly are when things aren't going their way pay more attention to how he handles failure than how he celebrates success. You're not selfish for wanting him to prioritize mm -hmm. you above his friends. The goal for a lot of us is to end up married, and when you're married, the needs of your wife come before the needs of your frat bros from the good old days. Truly, hoes before bros. There are two main types of men, givers and takers, and sometimes takers come off as givers in the beginning. Make sure you're not just dating a taker who's only giving you what you need right now so he can use you for what he wants later. Date a man who lives within his means. Savings are smexy, debt is not. Never date- So far, she ain't miss. In those last few. That's what I was saying, no say. misses in that hole. She's dropping like 70,000 little yeah. advices. I'm like, how? which one are we going to wreck? Where <laughs> do we even to pick this up? up? I'm yeah. trying to keep, I'm like trying to stop her when I hear, when I hear something that maybe yeah. is a red flag. But so far, so good. She ain't miss. Date a man who thinks he's the smartest person in the room. He's not confident, he's arrogant. And arrogance at the end of the day is born from insecurity. Stop texting him if he needs on average nine hours to text you back. No one is that freaking busy. Sometimes a man can. Some people aren't that busy. I don't know. I mean, nine hours is a long time. Maybe if you're like on an airplane for nine hours. I guess hours. if you could, okay. 
I get with phones. I'm like, I really a lot of girls and guys get really like up there when somebody's not texting them back. And my philosophy on phones is that like I get maybe out of respect, you would want a man to be like, hey, just to let you know, I'm going to be busy for the next like 12 hours. So if you don't get a response from me, but I'm like, just because you have a phone, just because people are accessible does not mean you should treat them like their time belongs to you. Right. Um, so you don't you don't want to be the psycho who like I sent you a text twenty minutes ago. Why haven't you responded yet? But you also don't want to be the a hole who's like it's been all day and you've been like oh I'll get back to whenever I'm, right. I'm gonna you know, right. hit on my boys first or whatever. Right. Like, that's there, there's two extremes. Just like you said, to have a baseline have a level of respect for your partner and you guys know how you communicate. You know how the way that you communicate affects her. You know that when you're being naggy or when you know you're just trying to generally engage a conversation. So yeah, I, it, there's nuance with these things as with everything, but as with everything. You know. Find your me happy medium. Change, but most of the time you just learn to accept more of what you don't like in order to stay with him. There's no way to trick him into finding you attractive by the way you drink your cocktail, the way you flip your hair, or the number of times you bat your eyelashes at him. Do you hear the snaps in the microphone for that one? I can't tell you how many TikTok girls I see going like, if, you, if you're if you on a date with the guy and you like don't know whether or not he's attracted to you, here are some easy tips to like trick him into being attracted to you. And they're like, lick your margarita salt off the glass or like, oops, I dropped something. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry, but no, absolutely games. not. Leave not the games for it. the kids. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be, I don't think your, your man's going to be like, you know what? When she licked that margarita salt, that's when I knew I wanted to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're good. Just be natural. Stop focusing on the gimmicks of dating and start focusing on the person you're on a date with. Perfect people are boring and lying. Find a man who can own up to his flaws and love himself anyways. The need for closure is our way of clinging to a past that no longer serves us. Most stories don't end neatly. Move on anyways. You only yep. have two hands. Don't waste the space in between your fingers holding on to what's actively slipping away. Sometimes you can't become the person you're meant to be without getting your heart broken first. Allow your heart to shatter into a million little pieces and see what grows from the shards. Okay, Let's talk girl. About I can't watch another one of her videos because it's like a fire hose opening up in my brain. But uh, for the most part, I agreed with much of what she said. I just you watch that and you're like, what? Like, what did you take away from that? You know, there there yep. was like a couple moments where I'm like, yeah, that was. Good. But then it's just hard. Right. You know, honestly, you know, it kind of reminds me of early on when we did your specials uh -huh. and we had like you breaking down like, like you know police. Crime statistics and arrest statistics and all this yeah. stuff. And it was like, we were like, oh, we want to do it like super fast and get it. And it was just like a fire hose. It ended up being like, yep. we had to adjust the concept because it was just too much information. Yeah. You're like, I get going generally in. what you're saying, yeah. but also. Yeah. It's like, there's some great stuff in there and it's true and it's nuggets, but like, I don't, I, don't, Man, I can't process it. That's how all information is going to be given to us in the future though, with our attention spans. It's like, how right. much can I shove into? Which begs the question. It's like, you can, you can distill things down to the little, you know, six word proverb nugget that's good but do you actually absorb that wisdom into your life and can you live it out in this and that that's right. what's more important is like you know you can you can have somebody who says every single one of those things but like you know really wisdom's more earned through the school of hard knocks and in life and and to actually apply it is like something that isn't a microwave thing so yeah i mean she's had a lot of great stuff but you know, I don't know if you're going to try to take something away from that, take maybe one thing and then really digest it and, and figure out how to implement it in your life because it's just, anyways. It's just a lot. Go on, sis. Just, it was good stuff. Go off. Girl boss. She's girl bossing. Mm. Uh, this one is from a man. We're going to hear from a man now. Never date a woman with oh, lost your screen. a high body count. Let's <sighs> plug in here so you can actually see and actually hear from this man. Never Wait, date a woman me. with a high body count. Never date a woman with a high body count. She's statistically more likely to have damaged her long-term ability to pair bond with a mate. Women initiate 80% of divorces, and that number jumps to 90% among college-educated women. The second reason is she's most likely been alpha-widowed. At some point in her past, she's probably slept with someone who's better than you. Better looking, more money, better at sex, taller, you name it. She will always be comparing you to this male. She's obviously more at risk for having STDs as well. Why is she not able to retain anyone? How has she slept with 20 guys and not in a relationship? And you think you're her soulmate at number 21? 
Oh, man. That got 96,000 likes on it. It's not that I necessarily disagree with the advice given. It's just going to be situational. Like, if a woman... And we have to define, like, what, what a high body count would be, which would be different for did every Did he say 21 person. at the end? Is that Was that what he was... Oh, yeah. What was the number You don't want to be number 21 or 22, did he say? If she slept so. with 20 people, like, you don't, do you think you're going to be soulmate at 21 or something like mm. that? Okay, so he thinks 20 is a high body count. And he looks like he's in his, what, mid-20s, maybe? Um, yeah, I mean, probably not the best for a woman to have a high body count. I don't know about the whole alpha widow. I'd never heard of an alpha widow before, but that's apparently you've been widowed by an alpha who no longer wants to sleep with you. So now you compare all the guys that you get with to this ex alpha. Yeah, I learned about that in Hustlers University. There's a whole <laughs> chapter on it. <laughs> After you spent like 400 bucks a month yep. on it. Yep. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know about all the nitty gritty stuff. He's talking about like, you're more likely to get an STD. Okay, well, it, that seems like an easily patchable, you know, it's an easy thing to patch Situation, up. Yeah. Just be like, you want to go to the doctor real quick? Check that for me. Okay, that's off the table, mm. which you guys can do. Uh, just put that out there for you. I don't know if you guys are... You know, just cover your bases. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's um, wild out there. It's wild out there. The city girls and the city boys mm. are up, up, all for the streets. Um, Yeah, no, I think it's going to be situational. Some people will care about that. Some people won't care about that. There are going to be women who have bo- high body counts but have recognized that that's no longer bringing value to their life and that they want to be on a different path. Will that path be a little harder because of the high body count? Probably probably going to be a little bit harder probably audience says uh i put never date a woman with a high body count 66 percent of you agree 34 percent disagree so that's where we're at with the the watchers almost it's a little you know there's room two out of three there's room it's not a a full you were before the show you were hitting me with a bunch of hypotheticals me and scott yeah around this question i don't remember what they were but So, so scott and taylor are both married so i was throwing them like hypothetical situations of like you're dating a girl and six months into dating, you find a list on her phone of like a, a 50 person body count. <laughs> Mind you, they're in their 30s. So this is going to be a 30 year old woman with like a 50 person body count. What are you doing? You ditching the relationship? You having a conversation and ditching the relationship? Like what? what's the standard? They both were like, we're out of there. <laughs> yeah. We're out of there. I'm packing up the knapsack and I'm hitting the road. Right. But like <laughs> you said, it's situational because at that point you're six months into a relationship and, right. you know, I... You would never get there and not know about something like that or have a better sense of it. So to, for the bomb to be dropped on you by discovering it on their phone and like then like there's also just the weirdness of having a list. <laughs> that's right. that's weird. But also just like you should you should have at least had that conversation by that point. So if you're six months in and it takes something like a phone lo- note to divulge that information, your the relationship's not going anywhere uh, as it is. Yeah. And then we we gave the the hypothetical, okay, what if it's like a month into the relationship and you finally have the conversation about body count and she's like, listen, um, listen, (laughs) it's 50, but I'm not like that anymore. Uh, You know, I've got... I've got my value set straight, you know, I'm I'm, I'm on a better path. I want to be with one person for the rest of my life. And then they were both like, we could have a conversation. (laughs) We could talk about it. Yeah, it's not an automatic deal breaker. I think I said, like, it depends on... The context in which you you meet, like if you're both living a city hookup culture lifestyle and mm-hmm. then you get in a relationship and you're a month in and you have the conversation, that's where she's at. But like that's kind of where you both are coming from. Then, you know, is that really that far off of where you, the path you guys are both already on? It's not shouldn't right. be like a big shock to the system. But if mm-hmm. it's like you met in church or something and yeah. uh, that up until this point, you had no sense that so that this person would have a past like that. Then it's like, OK, well, you know, how did I have no idea where you were at with this? And like, let's let's have a conversation about it and see. And and mm-hmm. I think the it's natural for the for the the antenna to go up a little bit and just be like, OK, is this is there baggage that's going to be associated with this that's going to affect the long term health of the relationship? And we need to really nail that down and parse it out, because, you know, if, if 
and it just depends. And there's, it's so situation dependent, I guess. Yeah, yeah. there's just so much, so many questions one would have, and that only that individual could answer. But I, in general, I get what this random guy on TikTok, what his his concerns are. But it seems a lot of it is like from insecurity. It's like he, she's gonna have slept with somebody taller than you and more attractive <laughs> than you, and he's smarter than you. <laughs> Doesn't like guys with wispy red hair. <laughs> yeah, right. Bluer eyes than you. Uh, so. Maybe maybe he's a little. He's got other things uh, going on to worry about other than body count, but it's body count zero energy. He also TikTok. calls himself like a life. What did he call himself? A life <sighs> influencer, a life coach, or something? Yeah, something which just can't be trusted. What qualifies this whole? I'm skeptical of this whole coaching thing. You know how people? Everyone wants to be a coach now yes. on social media. Yeah, it's like oh, I'm gonna be a life coach. It's like. What's that even mean? First of all, what qualifies for you, you for that? And like, how good is your life going that I'm gonna like pay you to tell me how to live mine? You know? Right. It's gotta be really good. Right. It's so funny because I'll I'll accept people's opinions on the internet. Like I'll listen to them, but as soon as you say like I'm I'm coaching you into you know success or dating, I'm just like oh, okay. Yeah, Next. it's like the extra step. Like you're like I'm officially stepping into yeah. this position of me telling you what to do with I, your life. I I'm establishing <laughs> myself as an authority. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. you know, like oh. you better have some like really good testimonials on your little, you know, Squarespace website. Before right. I sign up before for I that. Sign up for your life coaching. <laughs> this one, this next one, uh, and Taylor will be able to speak to this considering he's married, is oh. about securing the ring. So, ladies, uh, if that's your goal, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, whatever, we'll watch it. What are your go-to steps for securing the ring from your dream man? My grandmother used to say, month nine is negotiation time. Let's talk yeah. about over 30. 30 is you're settling down. You're thinking about starting a family. Say it in, an, in a very brightly lit open day setting. I'll do it at night because you'll end up in bed. I'm a tradition. Dude, is he your dr I don't know. If you got to negotiate, I'm like, no, girl, man, and I want to get married. And it's okay to say that. And I don't want to waste your time. What's the plan? Stop. Let awkward pause stretch. Don't fill in the blank. What do you see in the right. next five years? What is your future like? If he can't come up with 10 seconds what his plan is, this is not your guy. He can't say, of course we're getting married in a year. Of course I'm buying the ring. Of course we're moving in together. Whatever. He's just wasting your time. Then you have to do the terrible thing. Do the takeaway. You have to say, you know, I don't really think this is right for you. And I'm going to take it away. Then they panic. Because, you know, everything goes with that. You'll basically go, look, on Thursday, when you're not home, I'm going to come and get my things, and I think we need a break. And while that break is going on, you get to date other people. It takes eight weeks for a man to realize yes. that he misses you. Well, uh, scientifically, it says eight weeks for a man to come back. And unless he takes you to <laughs> Tiffany's and gets you the ring, bye-bye. Okay. Oh, my. This just sounds like horrible advice to me. Horrible. I do think at a certain point, if you are not aware of what your partner's intentions are, the intentions of the person that you're dating, you should probably figure that out. I feel like pretty much out the gate, you should be, you know, maneuvering and having that conversation about what your intentions are in dating somebody. If you're nine months into dating somebody and you don't know whether or not they're looking for marriage in life, what, what have you been doing for the last nine months? Have you heard of the DTR? Oh, define the relationship, right? Yep, we got a yep. we got a DTR. That's oh like, my god! That's like month one, or like after date three or four. I don't know. You gotta, yeah, like, you gotta have a uh, heart to heart. And say it's here's, so very here's where where the expectations should be because otherwise it's it's gonna be confusing. People, it's very rare for two people to enter a new relationship and be on the hundred percent the same page without talking about it of right. like where this is going, what expectations are. So you gotta communicate. So traditional of you, Taylor. Is it? I feel that. like that's just common sense. Think that you meet guys now and they're like. Yeah, I've been in, I'm in the talking stage with this girl. And you're like, how long have you been talking for? They're like, a year. <laughs> and it's like, oh, are you guys sleeping with each other? Yeah. <laughs> That's more than talking. <laughs> We're in the talking stage. Uh, uh, traditionalism is dead. Uh, it is wow. very much dead. They're not defining the relationship on date three. Is that no thing, more. Is that a thing they taught us about defining the relationship in church? That was like, the, I mean, there was a lot of weird, cheesy stuff in like how they teach you about stuff, but it was like, you got to do the detail. No, it's, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely a real thing if you are motivated in that direction. I saw somebody, uh, I forget, on Twitter or something that said, you know, all these girls are running around saying they're in situationships. <laughs> and then uh, somebody tweeted out, you, the thing about situationships is only one person in in the relationship is calling it a situationship. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's actually Only really one person. 
person. <laughs> and it's the girl for the most part. Aww. Let's be real. It's the girl going, oh, yeah, I'm in a situationship. And the guy's like, yeah, this is the girl that I talk to every now and then. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're simps, though. They're simps who would be like, yeah, I'm in a situationship with this girl. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, she, there, there are. She looked at me three extra seconds the other day. So. Right, right. <laughs> Only one of you is in a situation ship. That is so tragic. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know about this whole negotiating uh, situation. And at nine months, and it takes eight weeks scientifically for a guy to miss you or whatever. This is the same <laughs> science that they used to lock me down and, you know, make a jab everyone ten times <laughs> last year. And before realizing that it wasn't the wrong thing to do. Follow the science, Follow the ladies. Science. Follow the signs. Like eight week, what was it? Eight weeks for a man to make up his mind? To, to miss you. To so miss if you, you leave oh him for gosh. eight weeks and give him a break, at the eighth week, he's going to figure out whether or not he wants to marry you. Basically. If you have to leave him to make him miss you, you're, that's already like red flag alert. Red flag. Like, red flag. Yeah. This is how women get messed up. Yeah. Is this advice here. And I guarantee her bio says life coach. <laughs> <laughs> Even better, dating coach. It's a podcast. It was a po- at the end of it, it was like a whole podcast. Oh, so you man. can listen to them and get life advice. So yeah. I should look up her her name. Her name is Patty Patty Stanger. Have we gotten any super chats yet? We should we got a couple. Keep up with those. They so on Friday you guys kept us uh for an extra half hour uh answering your super chats that kept coming in. Um let's see. We have one from Elijah Pierre. I'm back to start the Super Chat Army via last time. So. Hey, Elijah. And who do we need? Justice for Flynn. Oh, yeah. So sorry, Flynn. Okay. Uh, well, Flynn actually gave another Super Chat today. Okay. And it says, did you think about my free thinker question anymore? Was that the, how do we define a free thinker? Yeah. I think, you know, you know what? Going back and thinking about it, I was like, I feel like we, we summed up. What would I view a free thinker to be? Yeah, I thought in, we nailed it. In all aspects. Nailed it. Done. Don't ever need to <laughs> revisit. <laughs> revisit my ideas? How could I? <laughs> By the way, I looked up the lady in the video. Her name is Patty Stanger. And in her uh, bio, it doesn't say life coach, but it says matchmaker and uh, wellness witch. Wellness witch. Which is the same thing. So I'm still counting that as a W on my part. A million followers. Wow. A million followers. That's so famous. She's making a lot of people well. She's she's a matchmaker. I mean, if it's working and you're defining the relationship at nine months and getting that ring through, I don't know, what do you call that at that point? When you're, uh, coer- is that coercion? <laughs> Manipulation. It's a, that's what witches do, you know, you're, you it's a cast witch. the spell, get what you want. <laughs> okay. Cook that love potion. <laughs> Gosh, oh, ladies, everything's gonna be fine. We'll find our way eventually. And by we, I mean you. <laughs> uh, Taylor and Scott, their their message through all of this and watching the dating advice videos was, "I'm so glad I'm no longer dating anybody and I'm married." Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. gotta feel There's so much games. You just don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to worry about. Oops, I dropped my pencil. I know you used to do that on your dates with Ansley. <laughs> <laughs> no more of that. No more of the hair flipping. Yeah, I used to flip this hair all over the place with her. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what got it, actually. Yep. It was all the tricks. Yep, I know it. I yeah. know it. I was a I was a rabid customer of these uh, dating gurus on, on Instagram and, and TikTok. They'll get you there. They'll mm-hmm. get you to secure that ring, baby. Uh, okay, let's do some, some Reddit stuff. I went surfing on... Uh, Am I the a-hole? And uh, we should do some polls and allow you guys to participate in this as well. I'll read the questions for you. This one is, am I the a-hole for walking out of a restaurant on my girlfriend? Girlfriend and I were having dinner at a restaurant when she got a text from her best friend who recently gave birth. And she said, OMG, she got a C-section. She works as as a nurse. So she then explained to me the type of incision they make for that and how it'll leave a scar. I then, as a joke said, at least she'll, oh my gosh, I did not read these before. At least she'll still be tight down there, is what this boyfriend said. My girlfriend looked confused and then said that was a weird comment to make about her friend. I then said it was a very normal joke to make and she disagreed. I don't know what this uh, acronym means, TLDR. 
<laughs> you don't know what that means. I don't. Too long didn't read. So if if you write a big long post on Reddit and you you say here's the TLDR, this is like the only information that you need. Perfect. Okay. There was some back and forth and I asked her to drop it and she kept trying to talk about it. I said to her, you're so insecure. And then she goes, does it make you feel good to call me that? So then I got really frustrated, got up and walked out of the restaurant and drove home. She called me several times. I drove both of us there and I was so frustrated. I just wanted to go home. So I turned my phone off. She showed up at our apartment 30 minutes later and was really pissed, called me an a-hole and overreacted. And that she wanted, oh, that she waited in the cold for 20 minutes for an Uber. Am I the a-hole for walking out of her and leaving her there for being frustrated? You know what? I'm going to say you're the a-hole for a lot lot of reasons. (laughs) So many more reasons than uh, just leaving her at the restaurant. What are your thoughts, Taylor? This is a... Okay, so he made his remark and she Mm -hmm. got upset. And then he left because she was upset and taking it too seriously by his... Yeah, he called her insecure for because she got upset that she, that he said that about her best friend and he left the restaurant, went home in the one car that they brought and turned off his phone. No, yeah, you're you overstepped the line with the comment. You should have like just apologized for that or like walked it back or, you know, it's just like a weird thing yeah, to say. Yeah, just been like, yeah, there. whatever. Yeah, so you're already in the wrong and I don't know. Now, did she have to take it that seriously? Probably not. Right. Right. But that doesn't you justify, could have been like, like this joke. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, audience says 84% of you say he is the a-hole. 15% say no. I need to talk to the 15%. As in <laughs> many of these polls. I'm not, not, I don't need to talk to the 15%. I need to talk to the people who are dating the 15% because how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and how can I help you? If uh, you... If my man left me at a restaurant, took the car, turned his phone off. That's it. You're acting like a child. A child. A child. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. That's like, don't be in a relationship with someone. Like that's that. grounds. Yeah. That's grounds. Might be on the way out after that. This next one. Okay. Am I the a-hole for leaving my son's wedding after he denied his stepmom a mother-son dance? Okay. <laughs> my son Jordan is 27. His stepmom, Natalie, came into his life when he was 16. His mom had passed away when he was 13. Jordan never really considered Natalie as his mom. He refused to let her get close and shut down every attempt to have a close relationship. He even moved in with his aunt months after Natalie and I got married. As years went by, they started reconciling and seeing each other more often. He invited us to his wedding, which took place days ago. Uh, which took place days ago. We got there and the atmosphere was great until later when I found out that Jordan had denied Natalie a mother-son dance and instead chose his aunt to dance with him. Natalie told me this minutes later and I couldn't help feel irritated and quite upset. I decided to get up and leave and we both left. I got calls from my family after they saw me leave and Jordan called later and I told him why I did it. He got mad and said it was his wedding and that his aunt is basically a mother to him and said that Natalie shouldn't expect special treatment I said it's not special treatment, but a tradition. Besides that he tur- hurt her feeling for no reason other than for the sake of being malicious. He got offended and accused me of ruining his day and causing a scene. The family has sided with him. A- am I the a-hole? Yeah, dude. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> he can choose who he wants to do his mother-son dance with at his own wedding. So wait, this is the father that wrote it, right? Yes. Yeah. You left your son's wedding? <laughs> yeah, like, it's not about you. Get over it. Yeah, that's wild. This is why, you know, I, me and my grandmother listened to this a lady on Sirius XM, and many of you will know her. Her name is Dr. Laura. Dr. Laura Schlesinger, I think is how you say her last name. And she is, like, the most brutal therapist you will ever hear from. And her advice for... Maybe a man in this situation. I don't know. It's different if the mom has passed. But if you got divorced or something and split up and you have children, she tells mothers, don't bring other men in the house when your children are growing up. Wait till they're 18. Wait till they're out of the house. Have your relationship with your son or your daughter. You tried once with the marriage. The marriage didn't work out. So wait it out until your kids grow up. No bringing around all these random men who you're dating and all this stuff. Uh, around your kids and in principle there's many things that I agree with or at least waiting 
for a very, very long time until you know this person's gonna gonna stick it out. I know in this situation, clearly the, the lady st- stuck it out, but you have no obligation as a child to treat a stepmother like a mother. You really don't. You really don't. Mm-mm. That's it. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know much about family dynamics in that setting, but it just, <laughs> it's your wedding, man. Like, you, you know, whatever, however you wanna do it. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's just very weird. Just on on the very fact alone that it's not his mom, it's his stepmom. You you're the a hole, and I think the audience agrees. Seventy four percent of you said yes, twenty six percent of you said no. I, feel, yeah, I love how people like not only are they wrong in the situation, but then they go online and write this big post to like try to get the validation of like, see, I'm right, and then just <laughs> and they get ratio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> uh, let's get another one here. Okay. Am I the a-hole for yelling at my girlfriend to stop fucking eating? M- me, or my male 26-year-old uh, sister. Oh, wait. Okay, he's saying he's male, 26 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, sister, female, 23 years old, runs a bakery business, and she's been struggling lately to keep up with orders because she's been short-staffed. She does a lot of orders for wedding cakes that require custard or marmalade fillings, and I offered to help her out by making these fillings at home and bringing them to her so she has less work to do. Unfortunately, the past four times I've made these fillings, my girlfriend, female 24, has literally dipped her fingers into the filling jars and contaminated them because in her words she just wanted to try some i've tried explaining to her that she can't dip her fingers in and contaminate the entire batch because then i have to remake it i said she should use a spoon and take some out if she wants to try it so bad and she just pouts and says she likes using her fingers because it takes her back to her childhood okay okay come on now you're done bye you're done you're done <laughs> directly to jail do not pass go <laughs> Not collect two hundred dollars. You are done. Uh, you are done. That's so gross. Anyways, and selfish. it's so gross and selfish and childish. Today I was trying to find some chocolate custard to send over to my sister really fast because she was running late on a wedding cake order for an important client. I told my girlfriend beforehand to not eat the custard. If she really wanted to, please use a spoon. I get out of the shower and what do I see? She has her fingers in it again. <laughs> <laughs> Are you dating a gremlin? Like, what is going on? Yeah, like, no. what, this is like a, you know, what's the compulsive, like, you steal something, it's klepto, kleptomania yeah, or whatever? This is like that, but for but sticking for- your fingers in batter. <laughs> 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 you just have a weird impulse. Yeah, I'd be like, girl, what happened in your childhood that you yeah. feel the need to do this reenactment for me? Uh, okay, so. Something deeper is going on. Something this is too deeper weird. is going on here. This is. I don't mean to kink shame her, but it sounds like something's going on. I'm done here. with not kink shaming people. There's too many <laughs> weird ass kinks that need to be shamed it's out legal. of existence. Yes, it probably is. And if the shaming doesn't work, jail. <laughs> <laughs> so he said he yelled at her and told her to stop fucking eating the food I'm making because it's not for her and she's contaminating it. She started crying and got mad at me for fat shaming her, even though I made no comment on her weight and she has no history of weight issues or eating disorders. I know I was harsh, but she kept pushing my limits am i the a-hole no baby no (laughs) you're fine you need to be single (laughs) (laughs) oh my god you know i get on this show and i'm like you know love is hard and there's like things you're gonna have to put up with and you know there's gonna be trials and tribulations but this is no Mm. bye I'm so sorry so you should be the new dr deborah or whatever and (laughs) dr laura dr laura well, call in uh, to Amala's show and she'll just give you the love is easy. Just do what I say. Yeah. Just just, <laughs> just follow exactly what I have to say. I'm going to put You guys should wellness. send in your situation ships anonymously and Amala will react to them and give you advice on and, the show. Um, do that. Be a self-proclaimed wellness witch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll no. get you a costume and you can give people advice. I would say just take this advice at your own risk. You might, uh, you know, you know, it might end in flames, but I just do it for fun, you know? Yeah. And in this case, leave the pudding fingering girlfriend. There's no reason that this should be allowed. Mm. There's no reason. And the fact, it's not even the fact that she's doing it, right? Okay. Which, whatever. It depends on how you feel. Some people are not bothered by that. Other people are. It's the fact that you're blatantly telling her, please do not do this. And she waits till you're in the shower like a three-year-old. <laughs> and, and then you walk out and find, like, your child acting girlfriend with her fingers in a bowl 
Yeah. No. Can't even do the spoon. Now, are you are are, are you like anti double dipping? Are you one of those people? No. No, you're okay with it. No. I'm pretty. I'm I mean, it depending I'm on the okay. crowd, if it's like a party or something, and it's like a community. Thing, oh right, right. Then it's like okay, that's. Like, gross. I don't know but you like. If that. it's like a meal with family or something. Like, yeah, I'll, yeah. Yeah. I'll I dip don't my mind chip that twice. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind that if it's like family and not some like it's not like a potluck or like. Right, a but yeah, this buffet. is why it's so bad though, because this girl's like sticking her finger in the icing or pudding or whatever that everyone's yeah. gonna be eating from. It's like that's just gross. What now, are you doing? Is this something that's gonna be put in the oven? Or is it like something people are eating straight up? I don't think it matters. I think they're eating it. That's what I was going to ask. Does it matter? No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It does not matter. I, I don't think it matters. Get your Whenever fingers. we're talking about like public health and like cooking for mass amounts of people, you don't yeah. mess with that. Leave it alone. Yeah. This, Even if you did get through with this, right, and she got over it or whatever, this would give me the ick so bad. Like, it would give me the ick to know that you had to battle this girl over sticking her fingers in pudding not only is it blatant disrespect to like what you asked her not to do it's just like gross gremlin behavior and it's for her his sister's business you're literally putting her sister's sister's <laughs> business in jeopardy anyways I don't, I yes don't, a-hole i got the most passionate about this one out of all <laughs> i know it's interesting ditch the gremlin absolutely not okay am i the a-hole for showing up to my husband's doctor appointment my husband has been dealing with some health is- issues the past few weeks and has been frequently visiting the doctor. I asked if I could go with him, but he refused, saying it wouldn't be necessary. And when I asked why he wouldn't want me with him, he said he felt more comfortable having privacy with his doctor. I jokingly asked if his doctor was a woman, and he glanced at me. I anticipated his, neck doc- his next doctor's appointment and decided to go meet him there. He went, and ten minutes later I entered the office. I identified myself as his wife, and he was shocked when he saw me. I greeted his doctor, a man, lol, and we talked, but my husband refused to even look my way and refused to speak as well. I left the office. We left the office together, and he went off on me in the car, saying I shouldn't have followed him. She put followed in air quotes as if that's not exactly what she did. (laughs) I shouldn't have followed him and came into the doctor office after he asked me for some privacy. I said it was all right. I'm his wife and I already even I already even know what his issues are and just wanted to show support. He said I overstepped his one boundary and refused to respect his wish and made him more stressed than he already is in hard times he's going through. I thought he overreacted, but am I the a-hole? Yes. What are you doing? Is this Following what people him? are dealing with? <laughs> are, are y'all? Is this what y'all dealing with uh, in your relationships? I, Put in no. fingering, <laughs> doctor following. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Is, okay. Do, do you think it's a little weird though the way he's acting? Uh, it depends on what he's. I don't know. I guess it would depend on what you're going to the doctor for. But some people are just like, and I would imagine men especially. With health and wellness, they're just kind of like, I want to deal with that on my own. I want to be aware of my own issues, and I want to solve them on my own as a man. And if that's where your husband's coming from, then I'll be like, yeah, respect that. Unless she's like a literal doctor and she has something to contribute. uh, I think it would be a conversation that you would have. of, Oh, I want to be there with you to, you know, get the same information that you're getting so that I can keep tabs on what you're doing medically and we can make sure we're both in the same you know, arena of things. But if he's like, no, I just want to have my private moment with my doctor where I talk about the problems that I'm dealing with and I maybe don't want you there for that conversation. I'll tell you about it afterwards. You're like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's okay. I, I think it's weird that he's like not being, like this is your wife, mm-hmm. right? So presumably this is a person that you're more open with than anyone else in the world. Mm-hmm. So why are you like leaving her out of this part of your life? You're just going to create weird like i don't think it justifies her doing what she did but i'm just saying like you're you're creating unnecessary friction and weirdness in your relationship by just not being honest about something like she wants she doesn't want to know because she's you know right she wants to know because she's concerned about you presumably or else she wants to know because the way you're behaving and keeping her out of it is uh causing alarm bells of like why do you feel the need to shield anything from me so yeah i would just be like why like what's yeah, the like issue? Yeah, have the conversation. There's not enough detail in this right. particular one. All it says is he felt more comfortable having privacy with his doctor. So, and she doesn't specify the health issues either. So it could be something that's like kind of intimate or something, and you know, just don't want him around for it or want her around for it, which I would totally understand. I wouldn't think twice about it. I feel like if you're thinking twice about that, maybe there's other stuff going on that's just like 
Maybe. I, I think it just depends on the relationship. I think it's yes. weird. I think it's weird. You think it's weird? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. If my man told me, I would be like, okay. If there's doctor, nothing I can imagine that I would need to go to the doctor for that I wouldn't want, like, be willing to tell my wife about. Right. But maybe he is telling her what's happening at the doctor, but he just doesn't want her to go to the doctor physically. Like, I can't think of something nefarious that could be happening at the doctor that I, like, need to... No, me either, which is why, like, she's not justified either. Yeah, but... it's, like, both ends of it. It's just, like, yeah. a weird situation. I can't think of anything, like, weird that he would be doing unless he's, like, telling the doctor he's secretly an alcoholic or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. We need more context. When she suspected it was a woman and then it was a man, I was like, oh, no, this is getting juicy. But that's not really where this ended up. Yep. <laughs> She's like, it was a man. LOL. LOL. It's so quirky that I, like, almost accused my husband of <laughs> cheating yeah. on me. So quirky and cute. So we love that. <laughs> At least it keeps your life interesting, you know? Sometimes, you know, sometimes you want, as and what did Andrew Tate say? Men need to be the drama in their relationships or when you get bored. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you create the drama or else she will. Yeah. How about just don't have drama? Side eye. How about just don't have drama? Yeah. But some people do get bored. Some people do need drama. I will tell tell you that. Okay, this one. Am I the a-hole for not letting our daughter move back home? My husband and I have three children, 25 female, 16 male, 13 female. Our oldest moved out three years ago with her boyfriend and got an apartment. They were together four years before that, so it wasn't like she ran off with some guy she just met. We supported her decision. She was old enough and working full time. The issue is rent in our area has more than doubled on average since. The landlord raised the rent 40% in the span of three months. Sounds illegal, but anyways... Neither here nor there, and they couldn't afford to stay there anymore. The issue is that they, the issue is they weren't exactly swimming in cash before that. They don't really have enough for first, last, and security with the market. Not that there's much to, oh, not that there's much to, but anyway, whatever. I don't know what she's saying there. Their plan was to move in with their boyfriend's parents for a few months while they figured stuff out and saved up, but they won't let her come with. So they proposed an idea. She moved back in with us, him with his parents, and they'd save up and be gone in six months tops. The issue is me and my husband don't feel that's appropriate. She's an adult now. She needs to learn to take care of herself, not relying on handouts from her parents. She offered to pay rent, but we would only do that if she agreed to pay the market average plus her share of utilities, which would mean she couldn't save up like she wants to. Because we aren't doing that, she's been forced to share a two-bedroom apartment with six other people some of whom she finds sketchy. I feel for her, but I think it's her responsibility. At this point, she doesn't call much anymore, and I'm worried this may have impacted our relationship. (laughs) Yeah, no shit. (laughs) Maybe. What? Dude. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't go as far as to say you're the the a-hole in this situation, but it's definitely not the choice that I would make as a parent. I would be like, absolutely come and stay in our house for the next six months while you save up and get back to where you need to be. Absolutely. Are you kidding? Right. She's not going to turn into a bum if you don't like, you know, uh, prorate the rent based on how much of the consumption of their doing of the utility. Like, you don't have to like, you know, like, okay, can you pay this much of a rent? Something that's like fair, but helping them out. You know, you're probably established as the parent. So, you know, your kid's in a rough spot and you're trying to help them out. Like, that's. That's what you want to be. It doesn't mean you like say you don't have to be a responsible adult on your own anymore, but you know, because now you've driven a wedge between you. And was it worth it? Yeah, dude, this is the kind of mom that like takes the daughter out to coffee, and then you guys get in the car, and she's like, "Can you Venmo three fifty for your coffee?" Or like <laughs> you eat chips at her house, and she's like, "That'll be five cents." Mm-hmm. That's the type of person that I'm hearing from in this right now. Again, it's her prerogative, and yeah, I guess she'll learn a lesson of just, like, what to do when you have no money and you're just forced into a sketchy apartment with six people you don't know. <laughs> Dude, I can't stand the, the score-keeping thing in, like, family relationships. You go with, like, someone, and they're like, oh, well, we, we you paid last time. We paid last time, so you have to like, I'll just pay every time. You right, know, like, right. Just, just whatever. leave me alone. Like, yeah, let's. Don't want to hear uh, I want to diffuse the tension. Let's all just, you know, not have to have this hanging over our heads and keep our notebooks out of who's paid for what and how much. Like, let's just, you know, let's be fair. Let's make right. a good effort. But right. even, like, going out with coworkers and stuff, it's like, you know, oh, if I accidentally got took paid extra of the tip or I got, you know, someone's drink on my bill. Like, you know what? It's fine. Life's too short. Life is too short to be squabbling. Now, if you're in a situation, that's a whole different 
right. a different thing. But like, no, you're not in a situation. Right, that's <laughs> no, the whole point. Not. The parents weren't in this situation. Yeah. So. I'm like, I feel, obviously I'm not a parent, right? And I'm not, I don't know about the situation, but this girl is what, 26 years old or something like that. If my daughter moved out and like eight years later was like, hey mom, can I stay with you for six months? I'd be so excited. I'd be like, oh, yeah. are you kidding me? I get to like have my daughter back for six more months before she goes off and like into her adult life and I basically never see her again or only see her for visits. Yeah, yeah. I, I did that when I, I, I went out on my own when I was like 18. And then at age 24, I had gotten my college degree and I worked for my, I lived in, my, in a state with no family by mm-hmm. myself for six years. And then I wanted to pursue my master's and I moved back to my parents because they had just moved back from out of the country. And, and I lived with them for like a year and a half for almost two years. And it was like a great, great, awesome time for our family. And they loved it. And yeah. they didn't even charge me rent. Right. <laughs> uh, right. And I said, we have great family memories from that time. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess it's just a different outlook. Like some parents mm-hmm. have this view of when my kid turns 18 down comes the hammer and they're off into the real world and I need to prepare them for that and you throw them into the river, you know, like the Romans did. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm gonna let my kid just navigate and do whatever they want. I'm here as a safety blanket and security. Obviously not gonna coddle them or something. Right, but that's always with a fear, yeah. Yeah, but just to make sure that, yeah, you, you learn your lessons and you do your thing in your own time and I, I was gonna say something strong, but I won't. Say it, I'm just say like, it. why have kids if you're not gonna be in, you're gonna like... <laughs> kind of abandon them in a situation. Yeah, if you're gonna like cut you. them off over something so small, yeah. or like allow something like this to, you know, a misguided sense of needing to nurture independence for them, like overly so, <laughs> right. you like end up losing the entire relationship and don't even talk to them anymore over this. Like, was it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. No, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Okay, let's find some other ones. We'll do a few more here, and then we'll get into super chats. Hmm. Okay. Am I the a-hole for leaving my in-laws Christmas dinner after I found out that they didn't make accommodations for me? I got invited to my fiance's family Christmas celebratory dinner. It's my first Christmas with them. I have always been picky about what I eat. I can't help it. And it has to do with psychological factors, childhood and personal likes and dislikes. Before accepting their invite, I let my family in-laws uh, know that I wouldn't be eating the traditional food at their celebration and showed her a variety of dishes to choose from to accommodate me. She refused and told me to bring my own dish. I said if I had to bring my own dish when I'm a guest, then I better stay at home then. We went back and forth and insisted I wouldn't come if accommodations weren't being made. I just thought it was a simple request. And uh, the mother-in-law uh, couldn't agree Oh, could have agreed if she really wanted me there. My fiance agreed that I should bring my own dish, but I didn't. When we arrived there and I saw that no accommodations were made, I got up, got my things and walked out and went home. They were all shocked. I got tons of calls and texts from them both. uh, And my fiance came home lashing out, calling me selfish and spoiled to walk out like that over a dish that his mom didn't have to make for me and that it was my responsibility to feed myself. Okay. This one's pretty easy for me. This one's pretty easy. Dude. B F F R. (laughs) (laughs) You don't. I get it. I get, you know, if my daughters or sons, you know, husband, fiance, whatever, called and was like, hey, I cannot eat the food that you're having at your Christmas dinner. I would totally make something for them, but that would be something that I would just offer up. And I would be like, of course, what is something that you can eat? We'll make it on the side. We'll make it for you. Even if you can't do that, you know, like what's a TV dinner? What's something we can throw in the oven for for you to eat? But if that was not offered to you, then you go, okay, yeah, I will accommodate myself, especially since it's not, well, I I guess they could say due to psychological factors, but I was going to say it's not something medical. Right. For the most That's part. That's the only, like, concession I think I would make. Right. You actually have a thing. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, I would offer that on the table as a given. It doesn't make you an a-hole for not doing it. But if you're going back and forth discussing it and she's like, no, I'm not going to accommodate you, you can't show up to the dinner and be like, you didn't accommodate me after you said you weren't going to accommodate me. Like, you can suck it up for one meal and pretend like you like food that you don't like or not have to have everything catered to your perfect little whims and favors you know like right 
My my family is uh, like a missionary family, or we spent a little bit of time overseas. Uh, I lived in Panama in the jungle, for, or not, I didn't live in the jungle, but we went to the jungle uh, when I was living in Panama and went to Africa and a bunch of other places. And like people mm-hmm. offer you things, they have no other frame of reference for what your preferences might be. And it's like super mean and insulting to just refuse it, even if on its surface, like this is a, a soup with a fish head sticking out of it and it looks gross to me, but like, you know what? Right. I'm going to be respectful. It's just a matter of respect to like put your own preferences aside when you're entering into someone else's domain, their home, their way of doing things. Right. And, you know, you can suck it up for one day, one meal to like, because the relationship that you're building with the family is more important in that case. And, you know, this is your fiance's family and you're going to, you know, this is going to be your introduction to them. And just imagine all the like, drama and judgment that they're justifiably going to, you're going to, they're going to have judgment for you because of that. And it's Mm going to affect the way that they see you and your relationship with the family forever because you've had to be entitled at this dinner. It's like, just have a little bit of respect. Just like pack a snack or like eat before you go and then still hang out at the dinner and talk to everybody and chill with them. Mm Mm-hmm. Like there's so many other ways that this could have been handled. Eat it to the dog on the sly, you know, like (laughs) (laughs) what you got to do. Just be like, I ate before. I can't eat any of this. And you could even say medical reasons. You're saying there's psychological stuff going on. I can't eat any of this. I, I totally ate before. Or I'm, we're going to go, you know, grab some food after this and just sit down at the dinner and have conversation. That's what you're there for anyways. Dude, we've been watching uh, Fear Factor. You know that show Joe Rogan used to host mm-hmm. like in the 2000s? And they, you know, ev- almost every show, they make the people eat like the craziest stuff like cow eyeballs and squid guts and Mm -hmm. mealworms and just all the craziest stuff and guess what people do it even these like pretty pretty like they had a episode with like miss america contestants contestants and they were like going to town on these eyeballs and stuff and it's like you if if people will do that for fifty thousand dollars that'd be rough but you won't eat your mother-in-law's casserole (laughs) turkey dinner to like have with a good relationship with your family on the line you can't i'm sorry i'm like angry about this (laughs) I'm passionate about the finger in the pudding. Yeah. Taylor's passionate about the family dinner. Like, I mean, <laughs> six years in L.A. got me just up to here with dietary restrictions and people like, you know, being all. And look, I get it. If you have actual restrictions, and you have issues like zero judgment. Do what you got to do. Like, I'm, and I, I'm <clears throat> sorry. Like, that sucks. But, mm-hmm. you know, all this like I need all this stuff. I need this. And, uh, it's just like, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I'm just on. Um, the tantrum is what makes it just not work for me. Mm-hmm. I, I fully think that preferences like, are okay. Yeah. Right. Right. And I feel like, as I said, I myself would be like, yeah, let me accommodate that for you. But some people aren't. You just gotta accept that some people aren't gonna do that for you. Okay. Let's do one more, and then we'll get into the super chats. Uh. Okay. Am I the a-hole for demanding my girlfriend tell me her author's pen name? I'm, I've, male 32, been dating Siobhan. Ooh, I love that name. Female, 32, for six months now. She's always been very vague about what she does for a living. Uh, says things. Uh, like writing and working from home writing. But recently, one of her friends mentioned something and I finally dragged it out of her. She's an author. She writes and self-publishes romance and erotica stories and novels. And while not rich, she's able to make a living out of this. So your homegirl's writing smut for for a living. Okay. I ain't going to judge yet. Let's keep going. I'm judging. <laughs> Dude, I'm judging. <laughs> I can hear it. The, the sharp inhale. Mm. <laughs> when Taylor heard it. Uh, I googled her name and couldn't find anything, so I confronted her about this. She said she's writing under a pen name, so I demanded she give it to me so I know what she does. She refuses, saying she doesn't want it to be leaked, even by accident, and no one knows. I accused her of not trusting me, and she still refused, which was really annoying. I tried a nicer approach to her and told her I wanted to know her fantasies so I can try it out with her, and she told me that what she writes aren't her fantasies, but her readers, so she's still not going to tell me. At night, I tried to check her laptop for her pen name, but she changed her password before bed. I was annoyed, and I told her she clearly doesn't trust me, and it's not fair because I have a right to know what she writes, especially since it's a sensitive topic, and I don't know her if I don't know her pen name. She was furious. I tried to look on her laptop and told me to go home. Before leaving, I told her when she calls to apologize, I expect her, I expect to get her pen name with the apology. 
She called me an a-hole on my way out. I thought she'd call by now, but she hasn't. My sister told me I was the a-hole and I should apologize, but I just don't see it and need a second opinion. Was I the a-hole? No. (laughs) Dude, Reddit voted a-hole on this. They told him that you're the a-hole for this situation. 80% of the audience so far says he is the (laughs) a-hole. There's so so many red flags. There's so many red flags in this. I will say it depends on your view of dating because they've only been together for six months. For some people, six months is not serious. For other people, six months is serious. So it depends on what your intention is here. Yeah. But first of all, it's different if she's like, actually, I don't even know if it's all that different. If she's like, I write children's books and poetry and stuff like that. And I write under a pen name and I just don't want to give that pen name. But why do you? That's a massive part of yourself, a passion that you are dedicating your entire life to, that you are letting all these other people read and and know about, but you're not going to let him read and know about. And if there's so many red flags here. (laughs) okay. (laughs) so first he tries to go, okay, well, maybe it's just it's sexual. She's writing erotica. So maybe she just doesn't want me to see what she's thinking deep down about those things. I get it. I want to be open to that conversation. And I would like to know. And she goes, no. It's not my thoughts. It's the thoughts of my readers. So that's not why I won't let you read it. Okay, so that's out of the cat's out of the bag there. And then she says, I don't want you to know because I don't want my author name being leaked. As if that's something that your boyfriend would do. So you clearly do not trust him. Mm-hmm. There's so much wrong here. <laughs> so much wrong. Also, if you've seen the movie, the show Secession, there's a girl named Siobhan in that show. And she sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it. I don't know. And she sucks. Um, so I like the name Siobhan, but I don't know. I wow. would. This is this is breakup grounds for me, hundred percent. Wow. What, what are your thoughts? I, I mean, the whole the situation is weird to me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be in a relationship <laughs> like this in the first place. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, this is breakup grounds. Yeah, I mean, I, I you I was already like you shouldn't be hiding what you're going to the doctor for so what yeah. about how much more like what your whole career yeah what your whole career is that's just just even no matter what it is right even if it's not a sexual thing that you're writing just like why do you why the hell would you be hiding like your whole life's work and passion from someone that now you're he, in relationship with? he shouldn't have looked through the laptop i will give him that that was like a oh you shouldn't if somebody goes i don't trust you with this thing i'm not going to give it to you then you should go all right, I'm either okay with that and I'm going to let it go and we're going to continue dating. Or you go, no, I'm not okay with that. Do you want to give that to me? And they go, no, don't trust you. And then you go, okay, done. Bye. See you later. Don't go like trying to snoop on the laptop and try to find out what the the pen name is. Yeah, there's just so much. She's a way bigger red flag than, than he is. I would be like, yeah, no, you're going to let me uh, read what you're writing or... We're done. We're done here. You're done. This one's interesting because the audience is more against you than most of them. So I'm seeing like in six months, or he he could break up with her after getting the pen name and then blackmail her. Right. Um, six months in and you expect to be able to demand someone's pen name that they have kept hush and then try to go on the laptop. He's defo the a-hole. <laughs> that's so funny. I'm So that's what I, that's why I say it depends on what you view six months as. Because if you are dating somebody with the intent to marry and that's where you're you're going with that then that's a whole different story but if you guys are just like dating and it's like one of these casual oh yeah i've been seeing this girl for six months yeah i'm i don't know what a six months casual relationship looks like or is I, that doesn't i don't <laughs> that doesn't LA, process I mean, for me many a girl who's yeah. in a six month casual relationship yeah i mean don't overstep the boundary right and go on the laptop but also isn't that something you're going to want to know about at some point? Your girlfriend's literally writing all of her passions or whatever into <laughs> into these books. Bye. Mm. Why bye? I'm trying to think of, like, another example that makes this, like, put yourself in the shoes of this guy. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example. Like, if your boyfriend's like, oh, yeah, I make YouTube videos and stuff and, like, video diaries and I put them out to the world under another name and that's what I do all day. That's what I work on from 9 to 5. And I actually make quite a bit of money on it because people really enjoy it. And you're like, I want to see those videos. No, I'm not going to give you the name of the YouTube account. I'm not going to tell you what my name is because I'm afraid you're going to tell other people that 
the YouTube account is me. And I'd be like, okay, so why are you dating me then? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Just be like, bye. Yeah. It's, is I, that something it's where it's like when they get married, she gives him the pen name or something? Right. I, like at what point? It's an indicator of the seriousness and commitment level of the relationship of like when I'm going to give you the pen name. But six months, like, I don't know. Like I said, that's what, if this is some casual thing, then I get it, I guess. But it can't be at that point. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. And maybe if there was like a plan for when you're this committed, I get to know what you're you're doing. That would. Yeah. I would just I get it respect the fact that she doesn't want to tell somebody but you should date somebody who's okay with that and there would be plenty of people who are who are not okay with that on the opposite end of things what if she's like it's kind of like um you know it's like a diary i wouldn't want you to read my diary but everyone else can but they don't know it's me it's a pen name still i don't know it's just kind of weird it's kind of weird it's kind of weird i don't know i'll be like you're weird (laughs) i'm like do you want to be in a relationship with someone who wants to keep like has does not want to let you into this part of their life in perpetuity because you're six months in at what point is she gonna want to like open up right and it's totally fine to have some things to yourself in a a relationship sure hold some things to yourself this is a pretty huge thing to be holding to yourself and allowing other people to read that's pretty Mm -hmm. big especially if your whole that's how you're you make all your income and everything that's a lot then you're like then what? She's essentially running a business at any point. Is that going to be, are you any part of that when you're married? Does that? Yeah. What are the ground rules here on anything? Yeah. Like, how does that work? How does I don't that? Know. This wouldn't work for me, guys. That's the last one. Uh, let's get into some super chats here and read what you all had to say. I doubt I got all of them today, but. All right. I think I got most of them. Okay. Um, I want to read them. Sure, sure. So we have Elijah says, I'm offering free, unprofessional, unlicensed therapy to the people who said no to the guy being an a-hole. High fives to everyone who said yes. <laughs> to the guy who left the restaurant, I'm assuming. Mm. That's pretty much, uh, you know, if if that's not a bad situation for you, we need to step it up. We need to step up our expectations and change what we what we deserve out of relationships because it's not that. So you endorse this uh, his coaching career. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, okay, it. Flynn. Back with Flynn. Flynn's all over the place Flynn, today. Thank you. Um, justice for Flynn from last time. We Flynn. almost forgot a super chat. So we're... say his name. <laughs> Is that a bad joke? Uh, no. <laughs> What's your thoughts on weight shaming subjects? Like. Like weight shaming somebody? What yeah. is my thought on that? Uh, shame is a strong word. You guys know I don't like shame. We went back and forth on that subject matter where I'm like, you're not, you shouldn't shame your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, and maybe on some things, it's not a, you know, uh, end all be all rule. But I wouldn't call it weight shaming. If, say, I was dating somebody that was starting to gain a bit of weight, or I was friends with somebody who was gaining weight and I thought it was getting to the space of being unhealthy, I would certainly try to get have some sort of conversation engage, or at least think of healthy ways to work through that with them. Be like, hey, you want to come to the gym with me, or you want to go and do this act- activity that we do together, and uh, you know, I'm going on a wellness journey. Do you want to join me in that and participate in that? And just try. Just keep trying, keep trying. And then if it gets to the point where you have to, you know, settle down and just be direct. It just depends. Each person's going to be different. Some people really flourish when you give them just direct, you need to fix this and I'm going to put some pressure on you right now. And other people need something different. Mm -hmm. But shame is always so strong. I don't know that I would shame somebody, but I would remind them at some point of their impending doom. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It depends on in what sense you mean the word shame, too, because shame can be can mean like you are telling the person that they are fundamentally less than as a human being because of their status of their weight. Or it can mean like I am saying that this thing is not good for you in so many words and making that clear to you um, and, you know, using just that general knowledge and kind of like exposing that to you to, to apply some pressure to help you better yourself. And yeah. it's a fine line, I guess, but uh, yeah, I, it's not good to like tr- deliberately try to wound somebody. Ever. Yeah. Like, Oh, this, okay. Somebody just posted on uh, YouTube. Lady J Marie said, I was told I need to work on my stomach by a guy. I was at the gym all the time. Nonetheless, it was awful. And 
I think where people get confused with shame or think that shame is a really great tool is that often you'll get the desired result with shaming somebody, but for them, it's not desirable whatsoever. Like, yeah, some guy told you you need to work on your stomach, so now you're at the gym every day, and it's so great that you're at the gym every day, but you're at the gym every day hammering in this comment from a guy saying, I need to work on my stomach, I need to work on my stomach, I need to work on my stomach, and that's just going to, like, burn in your brain for the rest of your life because that's how somebody chose to communicate that to you. They chose to shame you rather than finding a healthier way to to communicate that. So, yeah, you'll get the same results, but, you know, at, at the expense of mental health for that person, just a lot of anguish and just, you know, like when, when, uh, like breakup glow ups, which is what a lot of girls and guys do, you know, somebody breaks up with you and you're like at the gym, just fuck, you're just banging them out. Right. (laughs) And it's not necessarily because you're trying to be better. It's because there's a fire in your stomach. Uh, and it's not the greatest feeling, you know, you know, you might get the best result, but it's, it's rough. It's rough. Okay. All right, next one. Yeah. Uh, Flynn, again, says a uh, question Go for Flynn. both. What was the hardest thing you had to deal with in your lives, and how did you go about that hardship? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Flynn. It's going for the You're jugular. You're heavy here. hitters. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Um, hardest thing I've had to go through in my life? You know, I don't. Was it having your whole world view crumble? No. No? That wasn't, you know, that wasn't the hardest. I would probably, I'm not going to, I won't get into too many details, but it's probably been just like uh, close family relationships that uh, family going through different struggles and having to deal with that and be on the the other end, you know, when, when you're in any point in life where you're just like watching somebody suffer and you just don't know what to do about it, whether they're suffering mentally, physically, any of these things, it's just a really hard thing to deal with. So I would say it'd probably be something along along those lines. Was there a second part to the question or was it just no, what's how the did you deal with it? how did I deal with it? Um I don't know. You just have to I like to meditate sometimes. <laughs> it just reminds you of your place in the world and you know you know, little person spinning rock type thing. And and that helps a lot. And just trying to be a positive force in the world is always, always a good thing. There are some things that you can't control. Like my grandmother would always say, I'm saying it as if she's passed. My grandmother's very much still alive. Uh, hi, grandma. <laughs> she uh, says, there are very few things you can control in the world, but you can control your attitude towards them and how you react. So just always having that in mind is an important thing and that lady is badass my grandma has been through some shit and she just wakes up every day and she's smiling and going about her business and i'm like you know i have not been through uh an eighth of the suffering that you've been through and you wake up every day and she's just like yep i can control my attitude (laughs) it's wisdom I would say besides uh, doing the day in the life with Cam Haynes last week, just one of the that hardest, was physically rough. That was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Oh man, you guys are uh, gonna see that. Yeah, uh, it was probably losing my grandfather a couple years ago. It was the first time I had dealt with like a close family member mm-hmm. losing, and it's it's just uh, it's a tough thing, man. It shakes you to your core, no matter like if when you when you lose someone you really really care about, and you know, fortunately, I had I have a great family and my faith and everything, and that I think is what helped me kind of process it all and, and go through it. But I, I wrote, I had to, I wrote, uh, you know, i spoke at his funeral and, and wrote about it and that really helped me um, process it. And, and so it's kind of a form of meditation or prayer, if you will, mm-hmm. to kind of work through that. But yeah. And like, you know, talking about it and, and I will say I, I understood the value of funerals too. Um, like there's a proverb that says like, it's better to, to spend time at funerals than weddings because they have a refining influence on you mm-hmm. um, because it just makes you so, you know, aware of, of, you know, life and the the nature of it and that it's finite and um it, it's just a it's a healthy thing and then it's also like it it's the grieving process seeing every, the whole community gather and celebrate him and and it just helped me you know just i don't know give me a new appreciation for being just a, a stable rock and a functional person even if you don't accomplish great things that people celebrate just have being a healthy father husband family man uh, person in your community prevents so much other dysfunction from happening around you and in your mm-hmm. life and just being present does so much. So, so much I drew, took away from it and it was really enriching, but it was very difficult. Man, I'm not prepared for that. Yeah. That's not happening to me yet. Yeah. Not prepared. I will say in like reading about other cultures and the way that they handle death, it's so different to how we handle it in America. It's like this super taboo. You don't look at anything. You don't, 
you acknowledge it, but only for this single moment, and then you all move on, where there's, like, other cultures where they smile and have parties when when people have, have died and passed on, and they some cultures sit with their dead for uh, a, a number of days, and if not moments after, after they die, and just acknowledge this is life, life has ended, it either goes on in, in some belief systems or it doesn't, and we just acknowledge that this is what happens, and... Uh, it becomes more beautiful and le- less scary. Yeah, however less you slice scary. it, it's a powerful thing. And, yep. you know, that's why I think there's such a, you know, diverse uh, ways people process it, but uh, but in big ways people process it. So. 100%. Oh, I'm reading these, huh? Yeah, um, yeah. The next one, let's see, Daisy, hopefully this is a lighter one. Um, <laughs> the name like Daisy, it better be. What's your live schedule? I miss it every time. What's your deepest, darkest secret? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gonna need more than five euros for that one right right <clears throat> uh our live schedule we go live mondays wednesdays and fridays at 3 p.m pacific 6 p.m eastern and typically for an hour although sometimes like today we go longer we hang know, out with when you the guys. super chat army shows up yeah dude when you guys send in super chats we have to stay there's no other choice so uh <laughs> daisy also said you misha and brett are the only ones that i watch these days others are too harsh for me so there you go <laughs> it's very sweet we, we do keep that in mind when we're making these videos we never want to be too harsh uh yeah. But you guys know that. You guys know me. <laughs> All right. Stevie Capone says, uh, the parents should have let them move back for six months, pay reasonable rent, and maybe give some of the rent back at the end to help keep them ahead. Yeah. I mean, they're, that's, that's, totally, a that, that's, that's a healthy way to do it. I personally would just be like, yeah, just come stay with me. We're good. Mm-hmm. Me and your dad are fine. Our finances are good. You can come stay. And uh, unless I'm really worried, like she's a junkie or something and I feel like she's not going to like be able to like get money or like, right. if I'm truly concerned about financial responsibility, then I'll be like, okay, pay they need me. that lesson. Yeah. Right. You know, right. Like, oh, see, you did it. I can give it back to you now at the end. If she was a junkie, I'd be doing far more than that. I should say, <laughs> but that was just the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. All right. Uh, Alfredo says throwback to shelf falling and laptop breaking, donating to replace them. Wow. That's that's an OG OG comment right there. Oh, for those of you who don't know, back in the day when we first started doing this show, we were in a far different place than we are now. And it was just dim lit gray wall and there was a white floating shelf and we couldn't drill into the wall. So we taped it to the wall with like industrial (laughs) strength tape mixed with like duct tape and uh, it fell off while we were live on air so it's just great we've come a long way play stupid games win stupid, win stupid prizes, prizes. And we've come one. such a long way oh wow my gosh it's always yeah. good to reminisce yeah that was a good one thank you for for still <laughs> sticking around with us yeah you uh, saw something header guard says could you add esh nah and maybe uh, info i don't know what that means uh, sh say it again esh comma nah and maybe info info all caps Huh. I don't know what that means. Huh. Okay. Well, we'll uh, look into that. I don't. <laughs> but thank you for the super chat. If anybody knows what that means. Yeah. Drop it in the chat if you guys can help us out with that. Yeah. Um, Flynn again says, yes, all the super chats at the end. Great content. Thank you, Flynn. Daisy Flynn. again says, um, Ma- opinions on mass shootings. Those, those are very high number. I'm not from the U.S., so I don't understand pro-gun people. Oh my gosh. Well, we'd have to do a whole episode on that. We yeah. could talk about that in depth. I go back and forth, not necessarily on being pro Second Amendment and allowing people the right to protect themselves, because I feel like that is particularly important. Uh, but it, it's really difficult to watch some of the things that happen and go like, how can these things be prevented? But I will say with mass shootings, m- more often than not, these people are showing very clear and distinct signs. Some of them the FBI is even aware of that they might go and commit an act like this. Uh, There's other mental health things going on, like they are severely depressed, they're on SSRIs, a bunch of different stuff is happening. Um, But as far as being on the pro-gun end of things, it's really all contingent upon the the Second Amendment. And one, this uh, right that Americans believe they had, due to the fact that it's written in the Second Amendment, to have guns and be armed in order to defend themselves from a possible uh, tyrannical government in in the future, and uh, for protection. Others like it for recreation, hunting, and things like that. Um, Although, with that argument, you could say that they would be far uh, highly, highly regulated, like in in other countries. 
yeah. Did I sum that up? Did that? Good enough for a super chat. Good the, enough uh, for a super a chat. Yeah. We can we can always uh, talk more yeah. in depth about that subject, and I definitely definitely have. I'm trying to think of a video yeah, where we've we talked about it. We did the Uvalde reaction. You did my thoughts on the Uvalde shooting and unpacked your thoughts on that. Yeah, and that's a long video that goes in depth, so check that video out. Um, okay, the coach for introverts says, I laughed out loud at your comments about life coaching. <laughs> coach. It just makes me side eye when I hear life coach. I'm just like... But did you get that the person who, who commented this is a coach? <laughs> I did not. Wait, what was the username again? I'm the sorry, coach for introverts. Oh. It's a YouTube channel. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> when I hear life coach, I'm just like the only... I don't know what I would reasonably expect to be on the other end. Maybe somebody who's like 80 years old. Mm. that's somebody who can life coach me. I'll take it. Hey, like I'm going to reserve judgment, you know, yeah. I'm, you know, there's, there's probably some good coaches out there. I'm sure there. there's plenty of good. It's just funny that it's such a phenomenon. I think it is. It's now, yeah. now it's like, okay, what are your qualifications? Exactly. <laughs> now I'm exactly. just like, what did you do to get that title other than give it to yourself? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see today's super chat. We got super chat within a super chat, super chat inception here. Okay. Um, this is Lynn or, Ellen Vicenzi. Um, Today's super chat. Better to have one to defend against those who get them illegally. Also, it's our Second Amendment to have them to fight government corruption. So yeah, there you go. that's exactly what I said. Make so we were argument. just talking about that. We were talking about Scott posed the question, what if the apocalypse happened and you were here <laughs> in Los Angeles, like in the situation that you're in right now? And I'd be like, damn, I'm probably not going to make it out of here. I, I would hope my boyfriend is here and not traveling for work. And then I'd be like, okay. You 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 pick. You tell me what to do. <laughs> there ain't nothing. All right. There's no way I'm getting out of here on my own wits, especially in Los Angeles. I was like, oh yeah, maybe you can take the car as far as it'll get us, and then you have to go on foot. Like arm yourself up as much as you can. Take the car. <laughs> and I'm like, in LA, you can't take the car as far as it's gonna get you. It'll get you one tenth of a mile yeah. before you <laughs> run into somebody else. So yeah, I don't know. Mm, but well, a gun would be helpful if gun, that was the case. Yeah. <laughs> In that scenario, certainly. I'd have much better odds now that I'm in uh, Tennessee. So Yeah, Taylor's far better off. <laughs> okay. Han Banak says, when dating for a long time, a year or more without engagement, how to know one isn't getting strung along? Without a year or more? I would just hope that, like, if you're dating somebody for a year, you would have already had that conversation. And if you can't very bluntly and frankly have that conversation about getting strung along without it being an issue in your relationship it's probably not the relationship for you like i can't think of something that i wouldn't be able to ask the person i'm dating and just come out straight out and say you know what is your intention with this and get an honest uh, answer given back to me so i mean if you're one year in with somebody and you feel like you can't have that conversation might not be the person for you. I know, and the longer you wait, the tougher it is to hear, but you that's like one of those things where you, you got to rip off the Band-Aid and figure out what's going on. You can't be scared to get clarity. You need to be able to get clarity. Yeah, and they should want to give that to you. Yeah. If, if you are in a, if they're in a position where they don't want to give you that clarity or they just want to like leave you hanging, which is often what I hear from a lot of girls is that our guys are just so unwilling to uh, place commitment. Although I'm fully admitting that girls will do the very same thing, especially in today's day and age. That's not for you. They don't value you enough to think that your time is worth something. And that's even crazier, especially if you are a woman in your early 20s. If you are dating a guy who is wasting your time and for more than a year, even multiple years, bye, is quite literally wasting some of the most important time in your life. Mm -hmm. Bye. Next. Amen. Um, all right. Kim Sandlin says, did you get in touch with Jeffree Star? What? It's going to take a little <laughs> bit more yeah. time, I think. Jeffree Star's, I'll be amazed if Jeffree Star comes on this podcast because he's a big, that's a big fish. Yeah. He's in welcome. A, in a big pond did you see the new commentary <laughs> on jeffree star today was a wire conservative celebrating this because he left that he said the the existence is gay straight and trans and so there's like conservatives who are mad now because he left that category open but he left what category open he trans, trans being like a valid category and well, he, but he excluded non-binary and weird pronouns we've talked about this i mean gender I dysphoria is real y'all i mean you might not dislike it but it's real yeah. trans is a different thing i guess i'll give them that trans is a different thing 
it's just another one of those things too where it's like you can acknowledge that someone in the cultural zeitgeist said something based without right. making it's them an avatar of your own beliefs yeah it's not like jeffrey star for <laughs> president you yeah. know Okay, Alfredo Ortiz uh, says, regarding pen name guy, I think the girl is the a- that a-hole, but the dude was also the a-hole because he kept on pushing. That might mm-hmm. be why many people think he's still the a-hole. Yeah, I think the, checking the laptop was a major flip for some people, uh, which I get. I think, yeah, there's just a piece of you that's like, oh, we can work through this. She's going to tell me. She's going to tell me. She's going to tell you. But if she told you, you know, let people show their true colors. If she said, I'm not going to tell you that information, bye. 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 Bye, Felicia. <laughs> All right. Sup, my dude says, with why a question mark on the stream title? Of course, you should never date a serial killer, whether it's a man or a woman. Oh, <laughs> funny. <laughs> Took me a second. I was all getting ready to defend myself. <laughs> you could feel the defensiveness my editorial rising. choices. <laughs> oh man, good one, stuff, my good. dude. That was well good. That was well done. All right, rock paper scissors says me sliding into the last few minutes of the show. I miss them every time because I never get your notifications, but I always go back and watch. You know what? YouTube is pretty unreliable on on that, which is why. I should sign up for the email list. <laughs> the email list doesn't go out exactly on time, but I will. It does give you updates as to all the videos that we've posted and a little blurb from me about how life is going uh, on the other projects that I'm working on, personal life, stuff like that. So you can sign up for the email list at the link down below, and that'll at least keep you up to date on things that you have missed out on. 100%. 100%. Also, we have like a below average number of subscribers on youtube who also have their notifications turned on so we got, we got the receipts guys so we need to talk about this do you guys <laughs> just hate me or yeah. uh or what's going on there you guys don't want to be notified when i'm live it's okay yeah. everything's fine yeah. next question we're hurt you know <laughs> we're not mad we're disappointed yeah uh header guard says every, oh he's explaining what the esh nah and info uh, were it's, okay okay everyone sucks here no oh. a-holes here and more info. We got a Redditor. That's what it is. Okay, so it's more options for the am I the a-hole other than yes and no. Oh. Got it. So you can say everybody's wrong in this situation or nobody's wrong in this situation. Okay. You can probably yeah, add that on the useful. poll next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank well, you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the clarity. Okay. And then Alfredo again, do a segment regarding guns. I'll be active with super class. I'm guessing that meant super chats. I was raised in Juarez. Look it up. And I'm pro gun due to the crime in Juarez. Okay. I mean, yeah, we've got some videos on it. Maybe we will revisit it uh, at a at a later date and talk about it because, I mean, there's always, always plenty to talk about on that subject matter. I saw Vice did a gun debate on pro versus anti, and I imagine both groups would resonate with me, although I probably lean more on the pro side of things, you know, being in America and all. America. Being America. It is President's Day. Um, there was one more. Elijah says, I got you if you all need a reliable cable. So A reliable cable? Yeah. I don't know what that means. Oh, there's a couple more. Jeez. Break something? Cable. Um, yeah, maybe there was an emoji I didn't get. Um, Michaela says, "Respect, react to Hassana, Hassan Abi, the Ben Shapiro leftist. Uh, um, Hassan Piker and the Ben Shapiro leftist. What is the Ben Shapiro leftist? I think he's calling him the Ben Shapiro of leftism. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. So not, I don't know that I'll grant that. but <laughs> uh, I don't know. That. I wouldn't grant that. Definitely wouldn't grant <laughs> that. I, know, I don't really dislike Hassan, but I don't really watch his content. Yeah. Yeah, I remember we talked one time about like how he was complaining about capitalism or something, and while he claims to be a socialist and makes millions of dollars, but we whatever. still have more super chats coming in. By I know. The way. All right, let's do them. Let's <laughs> knock them out. If we're trying to go home, guys. <laughs> I got up at five thirty in the morning this morning to get on a flight to L.A. So uh, I've got a I've got a hot yoga class to go to. Oh, geez. After this. ice bath, did you do your ice bath today yet? I did not do my ice oh, bath no. today yet. This is after. This will be after hot yoga. Although I, I'm not, we'll get it. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> I'll give you guys the update on that. All right. Um, okay. Vroom Karnik says, "When do we get to meet? When do we get to meet your boyfriend?" You probably sometime soon. Hopefully, I, I I would like to do a YouTube video with him in it. We'll see. I I might be able to get him to do that. Uh, yeah. We'll put him in a. Be fun. We'll do, maybe we'll do commentary on something, or we'll we'll do a Q and A from your guys's questions and, and have him have him on. I'm sure he would like to do that. Relationship too. panel with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Flynn says, "How are you two today? Seriously, 
Flynn, this is like your fourth super chat. We're doing. Flynn's good. trying to keep us on. Yeah. Keep us. It's, he you, wants Flynn. his justice. He's getting his justice I back tenfold. So. Yeah. Well, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm doing very good today. I'm chilling. Like I said, hot yoga class after this. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a fun time. Mm. Sweaty. All right, Daniel Wood says, "Hey, just on fat cha- fat shaming. I think your idea was good, and would add that be careful of getting used to commentating on someone's body. People called me too fat." I got to a healthy BMI. People called me too thin. Right. There's going to be people where it's like, oh, you're just, I'm just never going to be good enough for you. And you're never going to be happy with how I look. And they're probably just insecure. So they're just trying to, you know, project onto other people. I would say if you feel as though somebody is coming to you with a genuine respect for you and for your life, that's when you actually take in the comments that they, that they have for you. And throw out all the other stuff. There's going to be people who call you too skinny. There's going to be people who call you too fat. There's going to be people who have a bunch of things to say. Listen to the people who say, you know, for the betterment of yourself and for prosperity in your life, please listen to me on this. Uh, that That's a little bit different. Yep. Okay. Uh, Sarah says, send a $20 super chat above. Think it was missed. Just was sending love. So oh, thank you, Sarah. Can I find it? Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. I hate that she had to send a second super know, chat to I'm tell sorry, us that. Sarah. We need can to we find... refund super chat? Yeah, we I, we should be able to. I think we can refund uh, our super chat. I think you should be able to on the back end. Uh, right. Elijah, Pierre, thank you so much. LOL, I'm at the cable that shows the content from Amala's video feed. I don't oh, know yeah. if you all got a new cable so it doesn't keep going out. Elijah, we've replaced this cable. We've replaced it, and it still does the same damn thing. It's demon-possessed. I think it's just going to be a staple of the show. Mm. I think this is what we're going to have to deal with from now on. Beats falling shelves. Yeah, beats falling shelves. And, you know, it keeps things keeps things organic, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. It, gives us, it has character, you we know? We don't want to have too much good production value here. Right, right. It can never be too smooth. Mm. That's for sure. <laughs> Flynn, thank you for your super chat. He says, quick, end the stream. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little chat. We gave some dating advice. You know, we might put life coach in our bio after today. Personally, I'm going with wellness witch. Uh, Mm. I think that's far more suiting to my personality. Uh, And then we have uh, Am I the A-Hole, which you guys gave your answers to. We agreed on some. We disagreed on others. And yeah, leave a comment down below on your thoughts on all the various subject matters that we touched on today. And maybe the one in the title. How do you feel about a high body count? Not the serial killer kind. <laughs> the <laughs> naughty kind. How do you feel about that in somebody that you're dating? Does it affect the way that you view them? Drop that in the comments down below. As always, we like to encourage healthy debate. Also, if you want to have comments and conversations outside of the show, you can sign up for the Discord in the description down below and the email list if you want personal updates from me, plus all the content that you've missed throughout the week. Drop a comment down below, like, subscribe, and notification bell suckers because I'm watching y'all. Y'all are subscribed, but you don't want to be notified. Okay? So turn on that notification bell, and we'll see you guys later on in the week. Bye, guys.